At the turn of the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire was exceptionally powerful. It had expanded deep into southeastern Europe, dominated the eastern Mediterranean and had tremendous influence in the Indian Ocean. But one of the questions that isn't asked too often about the Ottoman Empire is, why, after the discovery of the Americas, did the Ottomans make no attempt to colonise it? There are ultimately several reasons for this, and the first is simple, geography. Whilst the Ottomans dominated in their local neighbourhood, breaking free of the Mediterranean wasn't so easy. The reason was that they had to go through waters controlled by the Aragonese, Castilian and Portuguese crowns who wouldn't have been too happy at the idea of a Muslim power competing with them in the New World. The Ottomans did have access to the Indian Ocean too, and so could easily have just gone around Africa, right? Well yes, but the journey would have been considerably longer, and why do that when you could just sail east and trade with Asia, which brings us to another reason. The Ottomans didn't need to sail across the Atlantic. Remember that the European powers sailed west in order to avoid trading with and through the Ottoman Empire, thereby enriching it. The Ottomans could simply trade with whomever they wanted, because they sat at the crossroads of three continents. Furthermore, the value of the New World wasn't really known at this point. Perhaps then the most that the Ottomans could have gained would have been to deny places like Spain or Portugal colonies in the first place. The thing is, the Ottomans had problems much closer to home. They had to contend with the Habsburg monarchy to the north, as well as enemies to the south and the east, such as the Safavid Empire. The idea was floated that the Ottomans could conquer all the way to Morocco and get themselves an Atlantic coast. From here, they would capture some of the west coast of Africa before moving across the Atlantic and depriving the Europeans of future territories. The discovery and later colonisation of the Americas presented a problem for the Ottomans. They had, recently, sought to emulate China and become a strictly law-based hierarchical empire whose subjects would owe loyalty to an emperor. The problem now was that places like Spain and Portugal had revolutionised what the world was. These states were proving that sheer tenacity and a disregard for established knowledge had its benefits too. In fact, fear of failing to capitalise on this new style of thinking was present at the Ottoman court, but sultans like Suleiman the Magnificent were frankly completely uninterested. To him and his successors, these new developments weren't seen as threatening the Ottoman position. To be fair, the Mediterranean had always been one of the most important trade routes in world history. The fact that this would stop being the case because of these new discoveries wasn't exactly obvious at the time. Time. To summarise, the Ottoman Empire understood that the discovery of the New World was a big deal, but didn't really see how it affected them. Whilst the idea of the Ottomans taking some of the New World was floated, they ultimately had their own problems. These problems were the Safavids, the Arabians, the Habsburgs, and now the Portuguese in the Indian Ocean. The sultans of the empire, even the great ones like Suleiman, did not see how these lands could endanger their position. And honestly, how were they to know that the discovery of the New World would shift the centre of power to the West? I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, and a special thanks to all of these patrons you see on screen for their generosity in supporting the show, and a particularly special thanks to James Bizonet, Party Boyko, Azarka Flash, Rob Waterhouse, Chris Wicker, Michael Reynolds, Thomas McGill, Gustav Swan, Winston Kaywood, Sky Chappelle, The Amusement Archives, Adam Harvey, and lastly, Raphael.